Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be going through part two of our How to Play a Warcry campaign series. In this video, we'll go through a really fun part of the campaign, and that's the Warcry Warband roster. We'll take a close look at each section of the Warband roster and all the rules that apply to it. So this video is really going to cover the rules and I'll create a separate video where we go through the Warband roster for my Beasts of Chaos and I'll show you exactly how I put together the Warband and the roster for the Beasts of Chaos for the campaign I'm going to play. In part one of this series, the previous video, we covered how to choose a campaign quest. After choosing a campaign quest, you will need to fill out a Warband roster. You can find this on page 160 of the core rulebook and you'll need to photocopy it or take an image on your phone or iPad and then complete it on that. The first step is to note down the name of the campaign quest you have chosen. Then fill in the other areas of player and warband information such as your warband's name. You can draw inspiration from the many warbands that are mentioned in the core book and also in the Warcry supplement books. I think it's a great idea for the name to reflect the background of your warband and I think just spending the time to write a few lines or a paragraph or two about their background and their motivations is a real great way to start the narrative and to start building your warband to give it character. You'll see how I do this in the video when we look at the Beasts of Chaos and create their Warcry Warband roster. You'll see that the Warband roster has space for one leader or a favoured warrior and 10 fighters. For a full 20 strong Warband, you'll need two copies of this page. Now let's take a look at adding fighters. The next step in completing your Warband roster is to add fighters to it. Your Warband roster is the pool of fighters from which you'll pick up to 15 fighters when mustering your Warband for a campaign battle. Before your first campaign battle, you can add up to 20 fighters to your Warband roster. These fighters can total any number of points, but it should contain at least 1,000 points worth of fighters to allow you to field a full warband during your first campaign battle. You do not have to add the full 20 fighters to begin with, you can instead choose to add additional fighters as the campaign progresses. You'll be able to add and remove fighters from your warband roster after each campaign battle. When adding fighters to your warband roster, you must adhere to the following restrictions. Number one, your warband roster must include at least three fighters. Number two, your warband roster cannot exceed 20 fighters. Number three, all fighters added to your warband roster must share the same faction rune mark as the campaign quest you have chosen. And finally, number four, there can be only one fighter added to your warband roster with the leader rune mark. For point four, a recent errata has updated this and it now states that your warband roster must include one fighter with the leader rune mark and cannot include more than one fighter with the leader rune mark. With the introduction of the Warcry Supplements book, such as the Agents of Chaos book, the rules around this have changed slightly. There are now rules for special types of fighters known as heroes and allies. These rules allow you to include more than one fighter with the leader rune mark in your warband, as well as fighters with a different faction rune mark to your warband. This gives you even more ways to theme your warband and make it unique. With these rules, any fighter with the same faction rune mark as your warband and the leader rune mark can be included in your warband as a hero. Any fighter 
with a different faction rune mark to your warband, and either the leader rune mark or the ally rune mark can be included in your warband as an ally. However, warbands can only include allies from the same Grand Alliance. For example, Chaos Warbands can only include allies with a Chaos Faction rune mark. In addition, fighters with a Chaotic Beasts Faction rune mark and the ally rune mark can be included as allies in Chaos Warbands. There are limits on how many heroes and allies you can include in your warband, and so let's take a look at the specific details for narrative campaign play. In narrative play, heroes and allies can be added to your warband roster like any other fighter, either when you are first filling out your warband roster, or during the add and remove fighters step of the aftermath sequence. Your warband roster can include up to three heroes or allies in any combination. When adding fighters to your warband roster, heroes and allies are not considered to have the leader rune mark and do not count towards the maximum numbers of fighters you can add. When mustering for a campaign battle, you can include one hero or ally from your warband roster for every two areas of territory your warband has dominated. For example, if you have five areas of dominated territory, you can include up to two heroes or allies from your warband roster in your warband for that campaign battle. Heroes and allies cost points just like any other fighter, but allies are ignored for the purposes of the rule that requires all fighters in a warband to share the same faction rune mark. In addition, when mustering your warband, heroes and allies are not considered to have the leader rune mark. If your warband can include thralls when mustering for a campaign battle, any heroes or allies you include in your warband do not decrease the number of thralls you can include, and vice versa. Like other fighters, heroes and allies can receive destiny levels, players must make injury rolls for them, and they can bear lesser artefacts. Heroes can bear artefacts of power and be chosen to become favoured warriors, but allies cannot. One other point to remember is that heroes and allies never lead. When a fighter is included in a warband as a hero or ally, if they have the leader rune mark on their fighter card, this rune mark is only used to determine which abilities the fighter can use. The hero or ally is not considered to have the leader rune mark for any other purpose or rule. This means that any rule that refers to the leader of a warband does not refer to any heroes or allies in that warband. There's quite a lot of information there to take into account when building a warband and later on in this series I'll create a video that deals specifically with heroes and allies and I'll use some examples with the Beasts of Chaos and show you what kind of fighters you can bring in for both heroes and for allies. For the purpose of this video just bear in mind that those rules are in addition to the core rules and those updates are in place and you don't have to use them you could just stick to the core book but if you do want to keep up to date and use those expansion books then those rules are there for you. Now we've covered how to add fighters to your warband roster it's a good time to point out that on pages 134 to 151 of the core book, you can find background tables to help you personalise all the fighters in your warband. I won't cover those in this video, but we'll certainly cover them as we get on and use the Beasts of Chaos as our example warband. Um, but this is a great way to add to that narrative and to really personalise your fighters and your warband as a whole. So we'll come to that in a later video. Going back to our Warcry Warband roster, let's take a look at the Campaign Progress Tracker. The Warband roster includes a Campaign Progress Tracker. This tracks how close your warband is 
to completing the goal of their quest. There are 12 points on the campaign tracker referred to as map points. Your warband begins on the map point labelled start. You can indicate the progress of your warband by marking the map point they have reached. You can find the rules for advancing map points on page 70 and we'll cover that in a video further down the line in this series. Now let's look at preparing for your first campaign battle. When first filling out your warband roster, you can ignore the lesser artefacts, artefacts of power, command traits, destiny levels, territories and glory point sections as these only come into play after your first campaign battle. Regarding the artefacts and command traits, each fighter can be the bearer of one artefact of power and one lesser artefact. In addition, your leader can have one command trait. Again, we're going to go into this in great detail in future videos. You'll also notice that we have a section on destiny levels. Each fighter can gain up to three destiny levels. If a fighter gains a destiny level, you can mark one of the icons to indicate so. During a campaign battle, if a fighter spends their destiny level, you can place a counter on it to indicate it is spent. There's also another section on territories. Your warband can dominate up to six pieces of territory at any one time. The campaign quest you have chosen will detail how your warband can dominate territory and what effect territory has on your warband. The final section to cover here with the warband roster is glory points. After a campaign, your warband will gain a number of glory points which can be spent during the aftermath sequence. And we'll cover the aftermath sequence in great detail in subsequent videos. That covers the overview for the Warcry Warband roster, but don't forget that we're going to go through and complete a Warband roster together using the Beasts of Chaos as an example. And that video will feature once we've covered the rules in the core book. If you've got any questions at all as we go through this campaign rules series then please add them in the comments below it'd be great to hear your thoughts and feedback and if i can help in any way that'd be awesome come and join me for part three of our how to play Warcry campaign series where we'll go through playing a campaign battle take a real close look at the convergences decisive battles and spores of war and delve a little deeper into the narrative that comes along with those convergences Thanks for watching. I really hope this video was helpful. You can find the next episode in the series at the end of this video and also a link to the playlist where you can go right through from part one right through to the end and find out everything you need to know to play a war cry narrative campaign. I'll put links in the description below to all the things we've used during this series and links to the catacomb set, the different war bands we've used, the dice and the card sets. There will be affiliate links to Element Games, but they won't cost you anything extra. In fact, they could save you up to 20%. And for every sale made through an affiliate link, I get a small commission, and that's going to help me develop the channel. So thanks so much for that support. I really appreciate it. If you like the channel and the content I put out and would like to support it further, please take a look at my Patreon page. It's a really great community where we meet on Discord to share our hobby, join in with different conversations around different aspects of the game, and a great place to hang out. You can also find perks on there that you're just not going to get anywhere else and it'd be awesome to see you there on Patreon and I'll put the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>